Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Rough and Refined. I'm your host, James. Today we're going to do a review of the Long Island Watch ISL 20. Uh, I have it in the black dial. I've had this watch for maybe around four to six months at this point, and it's actually the watch that has gotten the most wrist time out of any of my other watches. It's a great alternative to the SKX-013, which is currently discontinued by Seiko, and the prices are ever rising in the used market for that watch. This watch comes in at around $300. Let's hop into the review. So here is the watch on my 6.75 inch wrist. Um, just to be sure, this is the ISL-05, the ISL-05. Um, not to be confused with the ISL-20, the only difference being that the bezel on the 20 is a um, second time zone, like a timing bezel, um, whereas this is a uh, obviously a dive bezel. This is a 38 millimeter automatic dive watch. It has a solid link um, bracelet, which is very nice, um, an AR sapphire crystal on top, and a luminous ceramic bezel insert. Some more specs on the watch. Uh, the movement is an NH36 automatic movement. Uh, this movement is a movement that is used a lot by third parties that they can buy from Seiko to put into their watches. Uh, it's used a lot for that purpose. It is a self-winding, uh, so it's automatic. It is hand-winding, and it also hacks. Um, so you can really set you know, pretty precise time on this watch. The case is a uh, stainless steel, 38 millimeter in diameter, uh, 13 millimeters thick. Um, which seems like a decent amount of thickness, but it's really, um, it's really not too thick at all. Um, especially for a dive watch, it's a good size. Um, my favorite measurement is the lug to lug, which is 44.5 millimeters tip to tip. Um, that makes it very compact, um, for a wrist that's not huge like mine, uh, to be able to wear and still look pretty elegant, uh, and also look like a tool watch as well. Um, it has an engraved screw in case back. Um, the crystal, like I said before, is anti-reflective, has a little bit of a blue um, color to it, the anti-reflective coating, so in some lights it does look a little blue and not, you know, pure black. Um, it has a push button to point clasp. Um, the bracelet goes from about 20 millimeters up here, up at the top, um, all the way down to about 16 from what I measured, 16 millimeters, and this clasp they say is about 20 millimeters um, down there. Um, it's a pretty good, good clasp. Water resistance, like it says on the dial, 200 meters. And if you buy it from Long Island Watch, it comes with a one-year warranty. All right, now let's take the watch off of my wrist using the clasp. Two buttons here, just push down, and you have a nice milled clasp, um, which is a really nice feature um, compared to, you know, if you were buying the SKX-013, that would definitely not be as nice of a clasp. It also would not be as nice of a bracelet. This is a very nice bracelet, um, you know, kind of in Rolex, uh, inspired, um, has nice solid M links. Um, these middle links are also solid as well, so it feels overall a lot better than, like, um, you know, my Seiko 5 that I have. This bracelet feels a lot more, uh, a lot heavier and a lot higher quality. Um, Let's next go to the um, bezel. This is a ceramic bezel. Um, very nice, bright white numbers. Um, let's see if we can get a little bit of a sound for you. So that's the bezel. Um, it's a 120 click bezel. I think it sounds really good. My fingers are actually just a little bit, a little bit, it's a little hard to turn. My fingers are a little sweaty, but you know, it's not a difficult bezel to turn. Um, I do use it to time things like my commute to work, um, going to the supermarket, something like that, just to see, you know, how long those kind of trips take if you're timing something that's gonna take a few minutes. Um, I always think it's nice to use a dive bezel. Um, for that purpose. Um, let's take a look at the case back here. See if we can get it to focus in the camera. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad. All right, so on the back, on this case back, um, you can see it says 200 meters, it says Sapphire, um, and it also says Island Watch, and then it has uh, the Islander. That is the um, specific model that this watch is. And then it has a little um, nice uh, kind of map of Long Island itself, if you've never seen it before. 
Um, that is what Long Island looks like. Um, the founder, uh, Mark from Long Island Watch, as he always says in all of his videos, um, never talked to him, never met him in person or anything like that. Uh, just watched his YouTube videos on YouTube um, for a little while now. Uh, seems like a super nice guy, um, super passionate about watches um, of all levels, you know, luxury and everyday tool watches. Um, he's a huge... Like I was saying before my tripod decided to fall, um, Mark from Long Island Watch is a great guy and he's a huge Seiko fan and a big part of the Seiko modding community, which I was never a part of. I've actually never modded a Seiko or anything like that. Um, even though my first, you know, you saw my other video with my Seiko 5, um, I was thinking about, before purchasing this watch, I was debating um, doing a modification to, you know, a Seiko that I would buy. Um, but then I just realized, you know, it prob probably would be the only watch that I would ever mod. Um, I'm not a huge, um, you know, Seiko fanboy or looking to have a collection of Seikos, um, even though I do think they have their purpose. But instead of going through that route, um, which just seemed more complicated, um, getting tools and everything like that that I don't have, um, I decided to just purchase this watch, which basically had all of the modifications that, you know, I would want to change about the watch anyway. Um, and those kinds of things would be, you know, the sapphire crystal. You know, I really like it, um, especially with the anti-reflective coating. Um, you know, the ceramic bezel, which is also luminous. So we'll get a little bit of a loom shot later. And you can see this thing is probably the brightest watch that I own. Uh, this and the Seiko are definitely the brightest watches. Um, it has great, amazing loom. Um, the upgraded bracelet. This is something that I really complained about on my Seiko 5 that I always wanted to replace was the bracelet. Um, I really wanted, you know, something a little more substantial that didn't feel so um, flimsy. And this is extremely solid feeling. The clasp, it's another thing that I would have changed on my Seiko. You know, this watch already has it. Um, screw down crown, my Seiko 5 does not have this screw down crown, um, whereas this watch does, and you can hand wind it too. You can hear that. Winds very nicely. Um, and this is also how you you know, pull it all the way out. That's how you change, you know, the time. Um, very smooth um, going through the different times. Um, yeah. And you just screw it back in. And, you know, since it has a screw-in, um, what's it called, crown, um, you, know, you just feel a little more secure, you know, going into the water with it. Um, I've never taken it into the water. Um, I've done dishes with it and gotten it wet for sure, but um, I haven't really been swimming lately, but um, I would feel confident taking this watch um, into the water. Um, and then just, you know, on the wrist, it's a very comfortable, easy to wear watch um, for me. Um, it fits my wrist really well. It is um, very easy to size. It came with a um, very small screwdriver. Um, as you can see, the screws in there. Um, it was very easy to change um, once I got it at home. Um, so I guess I'll show you guys a loom shot next. So um, here is the Islander watch, uh, the loom shot. As you can see, um, this thing looks ridiculous. Um, you can see this from a mile away. It is extremely, extremely easy to read. I mean, I'm holding it at this point you know, my full arm's length away, and you can still tell the time. Um, I love that. Um, I love that you can also see that the actual diving bezel itself has loom on it, as well as the watch. Um, so in my opinion, this is just amazing, amazing loom um, compared to any other watch that I've ever handled. And this is just from having it sit out in the sun um, for about five minutes, five, ten minutes. And then just, you know, coming in here, this is, um, you know, just a different room, closing the door, turning the light off. Uh, this is not with, like, you know, a special little flashlight or anything like that. This is just literally it in, you know, pretty much total darkness after being in the sun. Um, this is one of the few watches where, you know, if I'm sleeping and I have this watch next to the bed, um, you know, I can pretty much, you know, read the time extremely easily just picking it up and seeing it in the dark. Hey guys, so that's pretty much all I have for uh, this review of this watch, the Long Island ISL 05. I think it's an amazing watch. I think it's great. Uh, I would recommend it to anyone, especially, um, you know, when I have coworkers or other people asking me, you know, about watches since they know I like them. You know, what, what should I get as a first watch? 
Um, this I would absolutely recommend. Um, I'd also recommend the Hamilton Khaki Field, which is also, you know, another watch that I reviewed. Um, I'm kind of starting more in the, you know, maybe more beginner or lower priced watches uh, in my collection to review because I feel like that makes sense um, given the fact that most people, you know, start out at a lower price point and then either continuing, they continue to collect there or they gradually go up in price point. Um, but I would absolutely recommend this watch. Uh, some people would maybe call it a beater. Um, I, I just, you know, I use this every day almost. Um, it's pretty much an everyday watch for me um, for commuting and stuff like that. Just doing, you know, if I don't know what's going to happen during the day or I don't know, you know, how rough, you know, what I'm, you know, hiking or whatever, you know, I'll try to wear this watch because I know, you know, nothing's really going to happen to it. This and the Hamilton Khaki Field uh, are both very similar in terms of usage for me as everyday watches. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you can, please like this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I also really would, you know, value some comments on this watch or what else you want to see from this channel. And as always, if you really do like the content, please subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to grow this channel um, and grow a little community of, you know, people who appreciate watches on here. So see you guys next time.